Are you looking for a small travel trailer that you can tow with your SUV? Well, stick around, folks. We found some awesome floor plans of travel trailers that can be towed with an SUV. Hey everybody, Mike from RV Blogger here in front of the camera and Susan's behind the camera. And if you've seen us before on YouTube, welcome back to the channel. And if this is your first time seeing us, welcome aboard. Susan and I make tons of videos all about RVing and we invite you to subscribe to our channel and don't forget to hit the notification bell when you do so you'll be notified every single week when we put out a brand new video. But without any further ado, let's get started on our review of travel trailers that can be towed with an SUV. This travel trailer is the Forest River Geo Pro model number G19FD. It has an unloaded vehicle weight of 3,417 pounds, a cargo carry capacity of 1,015 pounds for an overall gross vehicle weight rating of 4,432 pounds. The hitch weight is 432 pounds. It measures in at just 20 feet 2 inches long and it can sleep up to 3 people. When you first walk into this travel trailer on the right hand side is your comfy sofa and Murphy bed. As we wrap on around through we have our kitchen and dinette area and directly behind me is the bathroom that runs the full width of the trailer. Now our first impression of this camper is that you know for a smaller camper with no slides there's a lot of room. They really made the most of the space that's in here. Now let's start on the right hand side here with this nice comfy couch that you can recline on and kick back. The TV is located over top of the dinette and you'll see that a little better in a few minutes, but it's in a great spot to be able to sit here and watch TV. Now, in addition to that, this middle section folds down and there's a couple of cup holders that go in here. It looks like one of them popped out and is missing, but there should be two of them here. It happens that way sometimes. And oh, here it is, I found it. There we go, two cup holders. <laughs> And then down below actually pulls out so you can start to create your Murphy bed setup. So we'll just remove these little pillows and then we'll detach the two D rings, which are already detached. And then you just pull the front of this and pull it towards you. Watch your fingers here. That's a bad pinch point and just lower it all the way down. And then you'll hear it click into place just like that. Now, this is a good size bed that's in here. Let's measure and see how big it is actually. And it's about 74 by 54 inches. So it's a short full size bed, but for a small travel trailer, you know, that's a decent setup. The other nice thing with this particular Murphy bed is that this is one big mattress. There's no fold in the mattress that you have to deal with and sleep on and get that uncomfortable feeling at night. So this is terrific in my opinion. Now there's also a nice big window in the front to let in light. Some folks think, well, you're gonna be sleeping at night. The only time you'll see the window is when the bed's down. So I don't know how much light it's gonna let in, but you know, that's just where the window is and it looks great. Now on each side of the bed, there is a wardrobe cabinet so you can hang your garments in there. And then down below, there's a little nightstand on each side of the bed. Now, this nightstand has a receptacle in the front of it. The other nightstand has a receptacle on the side and USB ports on the front. Now, with this Murphy bed to put it back into position, this is the first time we're seeing this at the Hershey Show this year. Uh, there's a little locking mechanism, so you can't just lift up the Murphy bed and put it back in place. You have to pull this little knob here, and then you can lift up your Murphy bed. Now. I don't really like it because it puts me all the way on the side of the Murphy bed instead of in the middle where I really have much more control and strength to lift this thing up. But that's how they're building them now. That I, We'll see if that's a safety feature that we're going to find in all Murphy beds or just in the Geo Pros. We don't really know yet. Um, anyway, once you put your Murphy bed back up, you just grab your D-rings, slide them into place, and there you go. That keeps this from falling down and then you can jackknife your sofa back into position and you're all set. Now, as we leave the Murphy bed and living room area, we come into the kitchen part of this camper. And up top here, it's got these two really big doors that open up. Now, one thing I don't like about big, long doors like this that are short is they do wobble a little bit, but they've gone ahead and put some better hinges in here to make sure these doors stay secure. So that's a nice move, I think. Now, down below that, You've got 
a three burner stove here, which is really fantastic. A lot of cooking room and, you know, really great setup. And then a really good feature beyond that is it's got a real oven in here. So if you want to bake a pizza or something, boom, there you go. Now, next to that, we have a very large square kitchen sink in here. And finally, it's got a gooseneck faucet overhead with a balloon on there to hold in all of the antifreeze that they use to winterize this product over the winter time. Now, down below that, there's a little drawer here where you can put like a sponge and some soap in there to wash your dishes. And then you have some drawers down below for all your kitchen utensils. Now, you might be wondering, hey man, where's the countertop space? There is none. Well, they have this nice extend top right here so you can set up a coffee maker, toaster, whatever. And there's a receptacle right next to it so you can plug it in. So here I am at the dinette table and two people can sit here very, very comfortably. There's plenty of room for that. There's a lot of overhead storage up top here behind these four cabinet doors. Nice light underneath of the cabinetry to light you up. And then of course you have a window which is on the campsite, which I really love it when the dinettes are on the campsite because then you can look outside and you know, see your fire ring and picnic table. You can see your campsite out there. So it's a much nicer view. Now this table will drop down and convert this dining booth into a bed. And if you were to do that, Let's see how much room you have. You got about 70 inches by, you know, 32 inches. So almost six feet by 32 inches. So, you know, an average sized adult or certainly a little kid would be able to sleep in this spot. Now, one other feature we like to see right near the dinette is a power outlet or a receptacle, because I know in our case, we use our dinette to work do our trip planning, all that fun stuff. Every now and then we have to plug in our computers. Well, there is a receptacle down below on the front of the bench seat, so you can plug in right there. And then I also wanna point out that this is where the TV location is. And as I mentioned earlier, it's really in a great spot to be able to see it from the couch. Not in a great spot if you're sitting here eating, because only one person, well, can sort of see the TV behind your head. Now, a couple of other features to point out in this kitchen, you know, just beyond the cooktop and across from the dinette. This is where your microwave oven is located. And then down below that, you've got your refrigerator and separate freezer. This is a 12 volt fridge, so it runs off of your coach battery, not propane. So that is a terrific thing. Now here I am in the bathroom and I'm standing in the shower like I usually do. And as you guys know, I am 5'11", so headroom between me and the skylight is an inch. So you got about six feet of headspace in here. Now the rest of the trailer has an arched style roof, so it's taller in the center and shorter towards the side walls. But just to give you an idea of sort of your overall ceiling height in here, you've got about 78 inches or six feet, six inches of headroom. Now, the first thing I noticed about the shower is that this, <laughs> this shower curtain is kind of on the low side in my opinion. I think if I was washing my hair, I think water would be splashing out of the shower. It's just a little on the low side. One good thing is that if I'm shaving, I can see the bottom half of my face in the medicine cabinet mirror across the bathroom. So that, that makes it kind of easy. I shave up here and here and I do shave down here a little bit, but not here so much. Anyway, uh, it, when you're in the shower, um, you know, it's a little bit on the tight side width wise, but this way it's nice and roomy. There are also three shelves here in the corner for your soap and shampoo. And they have this little mesh net up here. You can put your shaver and stuff like that in there. It does also have a shower curtain, but it's on a track. And so I don't mind that feature at all. The shower track helps to keep the curtain in place. It does bow out into the room. So it gives you a little more elbow room while you're in the shower. Now, another really interesting feature in here is there's kind of like two medicine cabinets in here. And Susan pointed out that this one is deeper than this one. And so, you know, maybe you would really end up using this as sort of a, like a linen cabinet. You know, you could put towels and sheets and things up here because it's, it's deeper. Um, and that's a really, really great point. And then, but you can still use it as a mirror and all that when you're getting ready in the morning. The countertop space down here around the vanity sink is tremendous. I love it. There's lots and lots of room there. There's also a receptacle here if you need to plug in for your hair dryer and stuff. Down below the vanity, there's a little flip out drawer. You can keep, I don't know, maybe some sponges or something to clean up the area with in here. And then down below that, 
there's virtually no storage at all. It's really just an access panel. Now this medicine cabinet above the toilet is a great size medicine cabinet. It has three shelves and it's just perfect for storing all your toiletries and what have yous. And then finally, here I am on the commode and I'm gonna pass the elbow test in here with flying colors. So for your outdoor storage, there are three small compartments like this one, two in the front and one in the back, and then there's pass-through storage as well. This travel trailer is the Jayco Jayfeather 166FBS. It has an unloaded vehicle weight of 3,895 pounds, a cargo carry capacity of 1,100 pounds for an overall gross vehicle weight rating of 4,995 pounds. The hitch weight is 415 pounds. It measures in at 19 feet 7 inches long and it can sleep up to three people. When you first walk into this travel trailer, you enter towards the back where the refrigerator and bathroom are located. As you wrap on around, you have your living and dining area, your kitchen area, and then your bed is towards the front of the camper. Now, our first impression when we walked in here was, you know what, this is a really kind of roomy camp for, camper for a camper that's under 20 feet long. It's really, really done very well. Now, you'll notice on my left-hand side here is where you have a little uh, pantry closet and there's another little cabinet down below where you can store things away just next to that you've got your refrigerator and your separate freezer up top this is a 12 volt fridge which we're seeing in almost every travel trailer these days then as we wrap on around we have our kitchen area now starting up top here you've got this really nice big cabinet here and then right next to that you've got a convection microwave oven. Now we have a convection microwave in our RV and now that I've learned to use it properly, we really, really love it. Uh, we can cook pizzas in there, we can cook all kinds of stuff in there just like you would bake in a normal oven. So if you have a convection microwave in your RV, let us know in the comments below how you like it, any special recipes or anything you do in there that would you know, help the rest of us to learn. Let us know in the comments down below. Now, next below our convection microwave, we've got a three burner stove here. And then you've got a decent amount of countertop space next to that, but a very, very small sink built in here. It's, it's really too small to be washing dishes and stuff like that. It does have a little gooseneck faucet overhead and a window over top, which is great. And I love this backsplash that's on here. It just makes it look a lot nicer. It just gives it a better finish, but I would have probably preferred in a camper this size to see a two burner cooktop front to back and it would have used half of this space and then you would have a lot more countertop space here for you know a coffee pot or a toaster or whatever you want to use now another nice feature is just below the sink there is a receptacle here so if you do have a toaster oven or a coffee pot here you can just plug it right in and there you go make your coffee in the morning there's also additional storage underneath of the kitchen sink. And of course there's a pots and pans drawer below that. And then finally, there is additional storage under the cooktop as well. So here we are at the sofa in here. Now this sofa serves really three different purposes. Number one, you can be nice and comfy here and watch the TV that's right across from you. It's perfect location for that. Uh, number two, you can use these little end tables or I don't know what you call them, coffee tray tables side tables and you know use these to eat a meal while you're sitting here or you could even work you know while you're and use one of these too now these little end tables just pop right out they fit into the cup holder or you can pop them back in either way is fine but if you don't like the little side tables another option is to just grab this freestanding table and set it up right here in front of your sofa and then you can sit here and, and enjoy a meal on your table. Another nice advantage with these freestanding tables is you can take them outside and use them as well. So before I show you the final option of how this sofa is used, let me remove a couple things, pull these babies off. And before I jackknife this sofa out, I do wanna show you though, that there's some nice storage underneath here as well. All three drawers open, and so it just gives you a lot of extra storage space. And so this can be your sofa, this can be your dinette, and then finally, you can jackknife it out into another bed. And if you do that, you end up with a bed that's about 72 inches wide or long by about 42 inches wide. So an adult could sleep on here, maybe two small kids could make it, but you do have an additional sleeping spot 
right here. Now, just above this area, you've got all these cabinets up here. It's just one big area with four doors of access, plenty of storage up there. A couple of other really nice features in this area are that you have a receptacle and USB ports on each end of the sofa. We love to have that at our dinette area personally because we work at our dinette and we also use our dinette for trip planning and things like that. So if you need a computer out, it's nice to be able to plug it in and you've got options on each end of the sofa for that. Now across from where the sofa is located is where the TV entertainment center is. Uh, you have a nice size TV here and the good thing is you can see it from the sofa but you can also see it while you're laying in bed at night and there's even more storage built behind here. You just pull this little lever out, TV swings out and you've got additional storage back there. And they also have just a couple drawers below that that are full extension drawers. You can store even more stuff there. So here I am in the very front of this trailer and you'll see this is where the bed is located. Now I know a lot of you guys are already thinking, man, I don't want a bed that goes side to side because if we're sleeping in here, who's ever on the far side has to climb over the other person to get out and use the bathroom. But in a camper that's less than 20 feet long, it's gonna be really tough to find a north-south bed. But all that being said, let's see what size this bed is that's in here. I think it's a decent size. It's 54 inches by 80 inches. So that would be a residential like a full, -size, full size bed, right? Full size. So there you go. Great size. Now over top here, you've got four cabinet doors that open to one big storage area. And then you've got a light underneath or two of the bed, another light out here. You've got a tower of power here at the head of your bed and a little shelf so you can you know, throw your phone up there or tablet and it can charge overnight. There's also a window at either end of the bed so you can get a nice cross breeze in here. And then finally, underneath these storage doors, there is a lot of space available there. Now here I am in the bathroom and many of you guys know if you've seen our videos before, I'm 5'11 and I'm standing in here with about, I don't know, three or four inches over my head in the skylight. Let's see what we got. Okay, we have 75 inches, so six feet, three inches. And the whole entire camper itself goes to six feet, six inches tall. As you know, the showers are always raised up a little bit in travel trailers so that the plumbing trap can work under the drain. That's why they put a skylight overhead because otherwise my head might be hitting the ceiling right now. So the shower's lifted up, they put a skylight over top and it gives you plenty of room inside your shower. Now, I'm not a big fan of this shower right away. I'll just tell you, it's too small for me. Um, I, you know, I mean, I'm really cramped in here and it's just not enough room. And then on top of that, we have a shower curtain that wraps around and I am sure I would have water all over the floor if I took a shower in here. But anyway, you can pull the shower curtain around and take a shower in here. Uh, outside of the shower, we have the medicine cabinet located right here. This is still a little, a little stiff because it's brand new, but that will loosen up over time. Below that, we have a nice size vanity sink, beautiful faucet, receptacle right next to the sink for your curling iron, hair dryer, whatever you need, a towel ring, and then additional storage down below the vanity. Now, just above the toilet is some open storage that's up here, and you could store, you know, some TP and some towels or things like that. You also have a, have a couple towel hooks here so you can hang them up when you're done taking a shower. And finally, on the commode, doing the elbow test, no dice on that side, plenty of room on this side. Now, outside this travel trailer, there are a couple of nice storage compartments. There's this one here that actually has a receptacle inside of it. And if you can get a little mini fridge in here, you could plug that right in. And then you have sodas and beers and all that stuff ready to go. And then you have a front pass-through storage here so you can stow away all your gear. This travel trailer is the Winnebago Hike, model number H1316MB. It has an unloaded vehicle weight of 3,156 pounds, a cargo carry capacity of 1,044 pounds, for an overall gross vehicle weight rating of 4,200 pounds. The hitch weight is 566 pounds. It measures in at just 15 feet, 11 inches long, and it can sleep up to two people. When you walk into this travel trailer on the right hand side is where the kitchen is located. Then we have the wet bath area that wraps around on into the sofa and bedroom area. 
Now, as I mentioned, just on the right hand side is where the kitchen area is located. And this is a very compact and efficient style kitchen. First of all, all of your controls are located right here, very conveniently by the door. Up top here, we have a very large cabinet for some storage. Then they have a convection microwave oven in here, which is a great little feature to have. You can bake or microwave. And so it's just a perfect option for this little trailer. Now below that, there's this drawer that comes out for additional countertop space. One thing you can use this for is they do, uh, this unit does come with a two burner induction stove. So you could set that here and then plug it in around the corner and use that for cooking with pots and pans. You could also take your induction burner outside if you'd like to cook out there. Now the kitchen, well, just below that, is where the refrigerator is, and there's even a separate spot up top here for ice. The sink area has a shelf above with a little bit of storage space up here. Below that, we have a nice size kitchen sink in here with a big old gooseneck faucet, and it even has a sprayer that you can pull out. There's also a connect charging station back here in the corner. And of course, I mentioned just a second ago, there's a receptacle here that you can plug into if you wanna run you know, your cooktop or any other kitchen appliance for that matter, or a blender if you want to make a batch of margaritas up, which I highly recommend. Down below the kitchen sink, there's a really big cabinet space down here for additional storage. Now, as we wrap on around, we're going to pass the bathroom and we'll cover that last, but there's a nice wardrobe closet here. You can hang your garments in there or just use it for general storage. Now, here I am on the couch in here, and actually this is a really pretty comfortable couch. Plus, I'm really tired from walking around all day, so it feels extra good. But anyway, this couch is really three things in one. Number one, it is your couch where you can sit here and relax. And actually, you can enjoy some TV because just off to my right here is where the TV rough-in would be located. So you can chill out here, watch a little TV, and take it easy. The number two way that this couch is used is it is your dinette. And there's a freestanding table that comes along with this unit, so you can just set up your table right here enjoy a meal maybe watch some tv and relax and the third function of this couch is this becomes your bed because we have a murphy bed set up and let me show you how that works first of all you just jackknife the sofa out and then you just pull the murphy bed straight on down and then once you do that you can see the trailer really opens up and becomes much more spacious inside. Now on each side of the bed, there's a little end table there, plus there's a receptacle and USB port. Above the bed, there's a window in the back, and there's a light underneath of the four door cabinets above for all of your storage needs. Now let's measure up this bed and see how much space we're working with here. This mattress is 74 inches by 54 inches wide, so this will be considered a short, full-size bed but not bad for a small trailer like this. So the last thing to note about this couch area is there are a couple of cabinet doors below. Now these doors just sort of flop down and you sort of have to get on your hands and knees to reach under here to pull your stuff in and out. I think it would have been a lot nicer if they had put drawers under here instead of doors. And just to my right is another little door that you can use to store things away as well. So here I am in the bathroom in this unit and this is a wet bath. Uh, but it's a pretty good size, especially it has a lot of height room, headroom in here. Let's take a measurement and see. Usually uh, when I'm in a wet bath, I'm crouched down pretty tight. But in this one, we have, wow, six feet, five inches of space into the skylight. The entire ceiling in here is not that tall. But let's take a look and see what the height is through the entire... Uh, we're like six feet six inches throughout the entire rig so that's a pretty good amount of head space in here now this wet bath is you know just big enough to get in here and take a shower there's also a little corner sink here that you could use it even has a little sink faucet for that and finally when i'm sitting here on the commode there's no way i'll ever pass the elbow test in here but this is good enough of a bathroom to get the job done Two other things to note inside the shower are the shower rod above my head here. So if you have a wet bathing suit or anything you need to hang up in here, you certainly can do that. And finally, there's a little storage compartment right behind the commode where maybe you could store some shampoo or some soap or something like that. So in the very back of this unit, there's a very nice storage area here, which is actually located under the bed from inside. I love the fact that you can access it from two different sides of this travel trailer. 
Hey guys, let us know which one of these awesome travel trailers you like the most and why in the comments down below. We would sure like to hear from you. And if you want to check out some more awesome travel trailers that can be towed by an SUV, just click the box down below and Susan and I will see you in the next video.